Now the purpose of this video is to go over item grouping using names and colors in Reaper. So our project set up here and to group our items, we could right click and drag like this, which is known as marquee dragging and let go, which selects all these items. Then we could type G and that's gonna group those items. As we can see the green around the items along with a linking icon in each one of the items, which we'll see even if the items aren't selected like this. See the icon in each one of the items, letting us know they're part of this group. What that means is if we move our items, they're all gonna move together, regardless of which one we grab. So I can grab this one, and they all move together. Or we can cut them, paste them, delete them all together. And if we didn't want them to behave like a group, we can go up here to this toolbar button and turn it off. Or use a keyboard shortcut to do the same thing. Alt Shift G on the PC, Option Shift G on the Mac, and that turns item grouping on and off. So with it off, even though these items are grouped, if I move them, they're gonna move separately, as if they're not part of a group. Turn it back on with the keyboard shortcut, but doing it with the toolbar button, now they're gonna behave like a group again. Drag any of them and they all move together. Or cut them, or paste them, or delete them, that simply. Now if you wanted to remove or ungroup that group, we could select any item in the group, type U, now that group is removed. So again, it's not gonna behave like a group, but these items are no longer grouped. As we can see, there's no little button on each item showing us they're grouped or linked. Now we can get similar functionality to item grouping by using track grouping. So if I select my two guitar tracks, type Shift G, that opens up our track grouping, which has the functionality of behaving like item groups. So if I could turn on media lead and follow, now the items that start and stop at the same point on these two tracks are gonna behave like item groups. So I could drag this one, and they both drag together, or this one, or this one, and so on. Giving us item grouping behavior by using track grouping. And we also get razor editing grouping behavior the same way, using the track grouping. As razor editing is part of the same checkbox. So if we create a razor edit in this area, it razor edits both tracks together. Over there or over here, creating a razor edit area based on both tracks at the same time. Already tracks in that track group. But that's track grouping, which is separate from item grouping. So let's create item grouping again. For these same tracks, type G. Now these items are all grouped together, which gives us some new functionality. We can now name and color our item grouping. So we can right click, go to group, and we can see these items are already grouped, but now we could add a name and a color to our group. So let's give this a name. We'll name it vocal and drums. And notice it automatically gave it a color and it renamed it based on the name of the group, not the name of the items. Unselect them, and they still have that color, and they still behave like an item group. And if you want to change that color, just right click, go to group, and set the group color. Let's give it a color more like this, hit OK. And now that color is chosen, which makes the item grouping stand out based on its color. And it's no longer using the color from the tracks, just the color from the group, along with the name of the group. And it'll work for all of our item grouping. So let's group our bass and our guitars, type G. And by default, it gives it a color. Again, we can right click, go to group, change the name. Let's name it bass and guitar. Now we can see the name of each item is changed to the name of the group. 
It also gives it that color. We could change the color by right-clicking, go to group, set group color. We'll change it to something like this. And now our color is this color. Or we could choose random colors. Right-click, go to group, set group to random color. If we don't want to pick our color each time, just set them to random colors like this. Now to view it like this, it has to be all item grouping or none. So if we right click, go to group and turn off display group names and colors in a range view, it changes all the colors and names back to the original name and colors based on the track and the item names, even though they're still item grouped. So we can still move them together as a group or cut them, paste them, delete them as a group. But if we want to go back to see them as one color and one name, just right click, go to group, and turn this option back on. Now, as you can see, it affects all item grouping at the same time. And we could turn that on and off from the toolbar button as well. Just right click, and we can change the display of the group names and colors from here. Turn it off, it goes back to normal. Turn it back on, it gives us those unique names and colors. And we could also see this in the Project Media Effects Bay. Go to the View menu and go down here to the Project Media Effects Bay and go to the tab named Item Groups. And in here, we could see all the item grouping in our project. Here's our bass and guitar, vocal and drums. We could hide the individual items in the group or show them or listen to them right here and see which items are part of which item group. But either way, it could be more helpful to see our item grouping with their unique item grouping names along with the color, which we could turn off again right from here, and they look normal. But if you want to see them stand out as an item group, just right click, go to our group, and turn on display group names, colors in range view. And when that's on, our item groups stand out based on their unique names and the colors that we chose. So that's pretty much it. That's item grouping names and colors in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. It's Reaper Mania.